And the drugs began to take hold. I feel a bit lightheaded. Maybe you should drive. Suddenly there was a terrible roar all around us, and the sky was full of what looked like huge bats, all swooping and screeching and diving around the car, and a voice was screaming. Holy Jesus, what are these goddamn animals? What are you yelling about? Never mind. It's your turn to drive. There was no point mentioning these bats to him. The poor bastard would find out soon enough. We had two bags of grass, 75 pellets of mescaline, five sheets of high-powered blotter acid, a salt shaker of cocaine, a whole galaxy of multicolored uppers, downers, screamers, laughers, and a fifth of tequila, a fifth of rum, a case of beer, a pint of raw ether, and two dozen amyls. Not that we needed all that for the trip, but once you get locked into a serious drug collection, the tendency is to push it as far as you can. The only thing that really worried me was the ether. There is nothing in the world more helpless or irresponsible or depraved than a man in the depths of an ether binge. And I knew we'd get into that rotten stuff pretty soon. One toke over the line, sweet Jesus. One toke over the line. One toke over the line, you poor fool. Where do you see those goddamn bats? We were on the road, searching for the American dream, with my attorney at the wheel. Let's pull in here. We can't. It's bat country. He might be gone for days, but we had to remain vigilant. We had to be ready to deploy at any moment. Here. I got you some, too. My attorney had found his version of the American dream, get rich quick with a large order of gravy on the side. We were turning into animals of some sort, living off the fat of the land, cheap fast food in a throwaway culture where nothing had any substance and nothing at all meant anything. Well, in there, I feel like going for broke. There would be no stopping him. The quest had destroyed my attorney and left in his place a sort of deranged mutant with an appetite of a reptile. He took in the sights from the Ferris wheel. Strange memories. Had it been five years, six, it seemed like a lifetime. The kind of peak that never comes again. San Francisco in the middle 60s was a very special time and a place to be part of. But no explanation, no mix of words or music or memories can touch that sense of knowing that you were there and alive in that corner of time and the world. Whatever it meant. There was madness in any direction at any hour. You could strike sparks anywhere. That was the fantastic universal sense that whatever we were doing was right, that it, we were winning, that sense of inevitable victory over the forces of old and evil. Not in any mean or military sense. We didn't need that. Our energy would simply prevail. We had all the momentum. We were riding the crest on a high and beautiful wave. So now, less than five years later, you can go up on a steep hill in Las Vegas and look west. And with the right kind of eyes, you can almost see that high water mark, that place where the wave finally broke and rolled back. The dream still echoed through drug-fueled hallucinations. Had it all been just a dream? The horrible smell of my attorney proved that it wasn't. <laughs> Ew, don't eat that. Gross. It's bad for dogs. Come on. Yeah. There was only one road back to L.A., U.S. Interstate 15. Just a flat-out high-speed burn through Baker and Barstow and Burdu. We've only got two of these left. Then on to the Hollywood freeway, straight oh. into frantic oblivion. Safety, obscurity, just another freak in the freak kingdom. <laughs> My heart was filled with joy. I felt like a monster reincarnation of Horatio Alger, a man on the move, and just sick enough to be totally confident. <laughs>